Okay, now, sige, turn on your cameras. Cameras on. Turn on your cameras. Marbs. Energy. By the way, after after this, um, you can you can take pictures, no? Instead of screenshot, you can take picture on the board with your cell phone. Okay, class, can you now see the board? Yes, sir. Okay. So, at least you are more than half, although gamay running ng appeal the record. So, I'm presuming, anak, gapaingon pa to sila dere. Okay, can you see me now? Class? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, we have already, last time we have already started our topic on the torsion of shafts, no? And then, if you try to recall, the shearing stress is TR over J. Nga nasayop ganit ko ato, if you recall, na in the butang na ko G, JG. Pero wala ito siya, TR over J. Uh, a good th a good thing to remember for that is it is similar to MC over I. No? Okay. Kaya nang I, moment of inertia man siya. Sa twisting J, polar na siya. Polar, moment of inertia. TR. Kaya nang R is actually the distance from the neutral axis to where? Moment po na sa C. To where you want to find the one. So, TR over J, MC over I, mga kwanra na sila. Kaya nang siya, MC over I is only for rectangular, TR over J is for uh, shearing due to, uh, stress due to shearing, of the, uh, shearing stress due to twisting of the shaft. Now, in general, angle of twist. Phi, which is, muna siya upat sa buok. TL over JG. Ang parente po na niya sa una is also deformation because angle of twist is angular deformation. Ba? Ang, 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 ang deformation po dito sa unang uh, linear which is either stretching or compressing is PL over AE o um, PR over JG. Kuwano na sila? Mga parintira na sila. Ha? So, di na ito kinahanglan na ng mangodigo. Okay. Kuwano na siya? Kanang, sayon na kaya na siya hinumduman. Okay. And one of the most important things here that you have to be careful is are the units. Uh, units. Okay, uh, ako na tong gikuan last time, no? One important unit is phi. Unsa unit sa phi? Angle of twist. In the formula, phi, oh, phi is equals to uh, PL over JG. 
In Hanglan, ang phase should be what unit? Radians. Okay? And then ang ang the rest are all are all quantra, no? If you have it in pounds and inch, no? PSI and so on. No? In Hanglan, consistent ang imong formula. Okay? So, that, just a review for what we have uh, discussed last time. And then, of course, the example was katong elements, what are the stresses on the elements when it is at the bottom of a shaft, simply suspended shaft, static, wala galihok, no? If you have a shaft na say support dere and it is being twisted on both ends, pangyong dito, niya kini, pangyong dere, no, ana nga twist. So, we we determine the element at the bottom. What are the stresses involved? So, it has shearing stress due to twisting and then it also has flexure or bending stress due to flexure. Di ana man. Nabawag man siya. Di doot. Ang dins taas, no? Ana. Okay. So, now, all of these combinations, you have to remember the more circle. Okay, moment as yet. Okay. So, let's proceed with some examples. No? The first is that you have a shallow, shallow shaft. Remember, the atom formula sa shaft is for J. Is pareha sa koan, pi di atong sa kuan sa i gani i it is pi d to the fourth over ila 32 32 so kini is pi d to the fourth over 64 ha huh? is that correct ang ang i sa sir is that correct ang i sa kuan basta ang isa ani 32 ang isa 64 Diba 64 tong I? I. For a circle of pi, D to the fourth over, niya ang J is also pi, D to the fourth over, ang kuan is 64. Ang katong I, ang J is 32. Do you have that in your notes? You try to correct your notes. Pi d to the fourth over 64 is for i. And pi d to the fourth is over 32 is for j. For circular cross-section. Did you find it? Nakita na ninyo? Or last meeting, naman ito ato, J. Kuan, J. Isa man, pi d to the fourth over 32. Okay. So, can remember, may numruman na ninyo? Okay. So, according to this problem, the shaft is hollow. So, ang ang J niya ane is, itong na ay outside to the fourth minus inside to the fourth. Yeah, now we have to do pi d to the fourth over 32. And then it is multiplied by the quantity d to the fourth, outside to the fourth minus inside to the fourth. Okay. Kineba. This is the inside and this is the outside. Uh, this is the outside and this is the inside. Minus. Okay. So. So we have a hollow shaft. It carries a torque of 30,000 30, inch pound. And the shearing stress due to the torque is 8,000 PSI. Now, it is not given what are the diameters, but the ratio between diameters. It says that the inside diameter is 0.65 to that of the outside. Okay? So, the, the inside diameter is 0.65 of the outside. So, we're going to find the diameters. 
So, of course, if we write it in a formula, we say that the inside is 0.65 of the outside. And so we compute for the J. Okay, TR over J, no, Malaysia. J, pi d to the fourth outside minus d to the fourth inside. Inside meaning 0.65 d over out. And then the whole quantity multiplied by pi over 32. So if we calculate this, we will have this in d outside to the fourth. So we go to stress. The stress is T R over J, meaning we are finding the stress at the outside surface. And I'm a bangag. Remember, if it is like this, this is your inside. This is your outside. Pwede ka mangitag stress dire in between. So you just have to find what is the diameter here. But in here, we want to find the diameter on the surface. Or what is the chef diameter? So DO atong gamiton. So R is the outside diameter, but over to. Okay, radius minute, TR minute, TR over J. So we just substitute 32,000 DO over 2 because this is supposed to be radius outside times the uh, J. So we will have this if, if we simplify, no? We simplify, we have D. By the way, this becomes D cube, no? D, D, O. Cancel with this, this becomes D cube, and then just cross multiply and solve for D O cube. This, this, this one, no, 30,000 divided by the whole quantity, 2 times 8,000 times the J. So our outside diameter is 2.854077 inch. Okay. Any question? Any questions? One thing you have to be careful is the point sixty five has to be included with the, to the fourth. Huh? Okay, point sixty five do to the fourth. Kinahangla na pilo na niyo. Eh, basic malim tana kinere do to the fourth may niyo ano na point sixty five. Any question? Do you have your calculators? Did you verify? Sakura? Okay, for those who are online, you also practice with your calculators. Okay. So I do not hear any any voice, which means probably, or I only hear silence, which means probably there, is, there are no questions. Hola, no? Hola. What's up, man? Lara, I'll continue. Okay, the next problem is it says here that suppose it is specified that the angular deformation of a shaft should not exceed one degree and the length of the shaft is six feet. The permissible shearing stress is 12,000 psi. We are going to find the diameter of the shaft if the material is steel and G. Modulus of elasticity in shearing, no? G. I matong isa katong atong kuan, no? For the rectangular. In sa polar G ang atong kuan for shearing ni siya. 11,500,000 psi. Okay? 
Okay, so we'll start first with the angular deformation formula. V is equal to TL over JG. That is our first equation. We need another equation because we do in in this case we know L. We don't know diameter, so ang J dili na to compute. G we know G. Ang ang torque dili gihapon na to compute because okay, oh, wala dili compute na to ang torque. So we do not know torque, we do not know J. L na a, and a, the, the angle and G. There are two unknowns. So let's try to look at the other formulas involving angular deformation of a shaft P. And according to the, the problem, there is also a shearing, permissible shearing stress. So we have to look at the formula of the shearing stress of a torsion of an of a angular or twisting or torsion of a shaft. So we see shearing stress 16t over pi d cube. Kwanan niha ato na nang derive Katong tr over j. Ato na nang derive By the way, this is it's not it's not specified that this shaft is hollow. So it's presumed to be solid. So we have already we have already TR over J Nisha, original TR over J. And then we substitute all the R's and the J. We will get the shearing stress of a solid shaft as 16T over pi D cube. And I say last time, huh? Try to recall. So what I need here is the torque. So that I can I can use this formula for the torque here. And probably we will reduce uh, kind of variables. Because in here there are, we do not know torque, we, we also do not know J. I will have my diameter. In fact, diameter is being being asked. So we have that. Now if we substitute this torque to this torque here, what we will happen is pi d shearing stress. Or pi d is this is the torque, huh? Pi d carrying a torque. Pi d shearing stress over 16 L J G. Do you follow? Pi d to the fourth. Shearing stress over 16. This is the, this is T, and of course J mantong isa J. This, this is oh so, sorry L, and this is J. This pi d to the fourth over 32 and G. So we will have this. If you cancel, no? If you cancel pi, and then 32 and 16, it becomes two, and shearing stress L over diameter times this. And you will notice all are already there. We know we know the shearing stress, we know the length, we have to know, we, we will be asked what is the diameter, and then G, and also 2. So, also we know this. This is the angle of twist for a length of 6 feet. So, we just substitute values. Again, Unsa sa ginyo unit ano? Radians. Now, it is in degrees. So, we have to convert this. Pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. So, you can see the degrees, this becomes radians. And then, uh, one ano no? Two, shearing stress, L. Remember, all the units here are PSI and Inches. So, kinanglan inches po rin atong length. Kaneng G is PSI. Ito naman to. Na PSI na siya. Pounds and inch per square inch. So, all our units should be in inches and pounds. Okay, so, we have that too. 
this is the shearing stress, allowable shearing stress or permissible shearing stress. This is the length in inches. And D, and this is our uh, G in pounds per square inch. So compute for D, you just transpose, uh, transpose, and then and 180 multiply it here, and then the pi multiply it below. You're going to, uh, and then, oh, wala na. And sa, oh, na cancel naman to. D na lang ni ang exponent ani, no? They have cube and fourth, D na lang siya. So, straight right away, you will get that. So, if you try to check it, Any question? Pak Professor. Unsa? Isak to nandi. Ah, sa. So you try to be, you check it with your calculator. Mo ni gawas sir? Ah, uh, okay, sige. So no more no more problem with that example. So our next our next example is a shaft that is being fixed or being held at both ends. Okay? So at both ends, according to this, the shaft carries a torque of 10,000 pounds at the location given, 10,000 pounds, 10,000 inch pounds at the location given. The ends are fixed, meaning the shaft cannot be twisted from the ends. Dipunggan siya, no? It's being fixed. However, you twist it somewhere in between. Okay, you twist it somewhere in between. As given on the location of T. So I just label this as A, B, and C. So we again have to remember... Angle of twist is TL over JG. Okay? Now, there are now two parts here. One example, this is the shaft. It is being held here and held here. And it is being twisted in the middle. But oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Has to remain constant where it, it is supposed to be, and also for this one, ana. No? So if it is like this, yung twist yah, ana nasya sa pika spot. Pag twist ane, ana ragyapon. Dio, dio, dio. Do you see the, my illustration? Let us say this is fixed. Pag twist ani in the middle, mana? Kinang lang katong dito has to balik po dana. Balik po na siya, ana. Okay, it is being fixed at both ends. So, do you get my illustration? In other words, yes. since our formula is TL over JG, and G is the Lana, Lana for speakers. Sorry. Nila Mukita. Okay. Sorry, sorry, no? We are we are from here, no? We are from here. We go to the other side. Okay. Angle of twist, TL over JG. Now, since there are two sides of the shaft, and each side is being held, so when you twist this, this side will have an angle of twist, and this side will also have an angle of twist. However, the angle of twist is the same because it is being twisted by the same torque. Huh? Kasi ito akong illustration. Bisod na niya. Saan ako muna ko eh. 
Ambil nama kau makin kat kanan The same as my illustration no? My illustration If if this is fixed And twist the ray Fixed position and twist for the ray Will be the same no, From the angle of twist on this side And the angle of twist on that side Will be the same Because it is the same torque that is causing the twist So let's try to subdivide it. Let us say A to B is one side and B to C is the other side. So we start for the angular deformation from A to B. Okay, it is of course we we'll just say one theta one. It has a torque. By the way, what is being asked in the problem are the torque reactions at the at the end. Meaning, katong reaction nga gapugong sa imong sa imong twisting in the middle. No? These are reactions, ha? Twisting reactions because of this. So, for the AB portion, let us say, V1 is equal to the torque reaction here, L1JG. Now, since J and G are both for the same cross-section, so sa, for other side, we can still use JG. One and G, J1 and J, G1. Because on the other side, J and G are the same. However, the torque and the length are not. And also the angle of twist. Do you follow? Huh? Are you following? So as I have mentioned, the angle twist, angle of twist for both sections are equal. So V1 is equal to V2. So if we substitute this and this to so that, so we will have this one. And we sub we substitute the length, no? 15, of course, inches, Malaysia. Then all of these are in inches and pounds. So we have 24 degrees. So, in other words, we can solve T1 in terms of T2. 24 over 15, T2. Next is we say that the sum of the torques no? this is the total torque that is causing this reaction to reactions so meaning the sum of these two will be equal to the acting torque the reacting torque the sum of the reacting torque is equal to the acting torque reaction on so we say T1 plus T2 is 10,000 pounds uh, 10,000 yeah. inch pound. One of my butang unit inch pound day. And then, since you already have T1 in terms of T2, we can substitute T1 here so that we will only have T2. Okay, so 24 over 15 T2 plus T2 is 10,000 inch pound. Wala na lang. Yan na lang butang na butang inch pound ha kay. Okay, ni. Di naman mo insert the ray. Inch. Inch. Pound. Ini siya inch pound ni, no? So, we can solve for T2. You say 10,000 pounds divided by 24 plus 1. Ah, simple algebra naman eh. We just add this T2 on two T2s. So this is actually 1 plus 24 over, over 15. And divide it to the 10,000. You are going to get this one. Okay, any, any question?
Wala na? So, if none, then let's proceed to the next one. Which is just applying the power. What we have is torque. I am using now metric or SI units, Newton mm. 1,130,000 Newton millimeter. The torque that is being carried by a shaft at 900 RPM. Find the horsepower transmitted. Now, if we apply it to 2 pi Tn, remember power is 2 pi Tn. Originally, it is T omega. T omega. But because omega is 2 pi N, so you will have 2 pi Tn for power. So power is 2 pi Tn. Now, I divide this by 60 because N is in revolutions per minute. We want this in per second around a unit nato will be in watts. And I am using here torque of meters. Okay. This is SI or English is, uh, SI or metric man is a unit. And watts is Newton meter per second. If you recall. So I don't like convert into meters in one. So torque is now in Newton meters. Okay, so if you look at that, 2 pi Tn, without the 60, it will be joules per minute or newton meter per minute. Okay, ang N mo is in revolutions out. Oh, revolutions per minute maning N. So 2 pi Tn, it will be newton meter per minute. So you have to divide it in by 60 so that you will have 2 pi okay getting 2 pi n is equivalent to the radians per unit time no? oh. omega and 2 pi t, 2 pi n is omega okay t omega matter is ya so 2 pi t n general as ya if we if we only have that 2 pi t n without the 60 what will happen here is this is Newton. 900 is 900 times 2 pi. It becomes a revolution per minute. So, kinanglan per second this year. So, we divide it by 60. And revolution, and if we have now Newton meter per second, then we will have what? Now, the power, what is being asked is horsepower. So, the power should be in horsepower. I'm using the conversion of spots, no? So, you can use 746. 746. This spots probably did not round it off to three significant figures. So, murang na say 745.7. So if you have that, then we will have here 142.8188 horsepower. Any more questions? Of course, if you have reviewed our previous topic and it is easy to understand this no? okay now this is an, a very important start of shaft design using maximum shear stress theory okay now, let us say that you have a shaft and it is not rotating, so it is static. 
the, this day, the, this condition says that the maximum shearing stress for the shaft. What is the maximum shearing stress for the shaft? Where does it occur? Which part of the position of your element? When your element is where? Assuming all katong kwan, katong atong example nga shaft ni siya, you have twisting and then you have also a flexure. Umanasa dere? That is maximum, you get the maximum stress here. Unsa may mga stresses when it is at the elevation, di ba? Elevation may tawag transverse shear stress. How about the flexor? Ha? Huh? Oh, zero. So, asa pa man lang lain part niya, daghan ng stress than just the transverse shear stress. So, it is either here or below. Because it has shearing due to twisting, Oh, kinesia is wala pa ni siya twisting di ay oh, na na di ay na na twisting ni na na twisting no? so katong transverse shear stress plus shearing stress due to twisting di ito duha, no? but the values of the transverse shearing stress is significantly small very insignificant. No? So that's why it's either on top or below should be the position of the element wherein the, the stress is maximum. And if it is, this is the load, what is the flexure or bending stress on the element on top? What kind of compression and below? Okay, so but it doesn't matter because their magnitudes are the same because their C is the radius. Okay, so we will just use the the whatever, no? Whether it is this is tensile or compressive, M C over I, and that is M, our C is the radius. I is pi d to the fourth over 64. And you simplify that, it becomes 32 M over pi d cube. No? Simplify this. Now, can it 64 or can 2, mahi mo 32. Can it d or can it d to the fourth, mahi mo d cube. Okay, you have 32 M over pi d cube. This is because of flexure, MC over I. Next, due to torsion, TR over J. We have already discussed this. It says 16 T over pi d cube, diba? Previously, for twisting. So, what is it? So, the maximum stress. Shearing stress huh? for the element with a shearing stress due to torsion and with a flexure or bending stress, either compressive or tensile, due to bending. If we draw, say of this feeling, torsion, many torsion. So we have a shearing stress. So our element is actually something like this. If it is on top, it is our first. There are shearing stress. 
we can assume any direction. So, ana, depending on the position of the, I sorry. And then, depending also on the position of the element, whether it's on top or bottom, it doesn't matter because the magnitude are equal. So we can have here pencil. This is our, and this is our, ana. Ana ready ayo. Sorry, ako ni drawing also. So this is our element. So the next question here is, what is the maximum shearing stress so we go back to the more circle because this is the element so if we go back to the more circle it is the radius of the diba? the maximum shearing stress is the radius of the circle which is sigma x minus sigma y over 2 plus tau x y in here isa ra ka sigma atong kuan isa ra po so we have this as the radius, you know? And so we only have sigma and then tau. And so if we substitute this, kini, kini, duha, we have 32m over pi d cube over 2 for this one squared. And this shearing stress squared, 16t over pi d cube, okay? You will notice that this 32 divided by this 2 becomes 16. So actually, this is 16m over pi d cube. And this is also 16t over pi d cube. Squared, we say squared for now. So we can factor this out. Outside the radical. Okay, squared minus ilatanan. So we can place it outside pi d. 16 pi d cube square root of m squared plus t squared. So that is the maximum static shearing stress for shaft carrying bending and twisting load. So monisia. And it is equal to, remember, 0.5, the yield point over the factor of safety. Why 0.5? We are not going to 0.5. Because this yield point is not the yield point in shearing. And sigma y is the yield point in tension. But when we have this, this is in shear. So yield point in shear over factor of safety. And the yield point in shear is 0.5, the yield point in tension. We have already discussed that, no? Okay, so any question? Class, any question, class? No, sir. Wala na? Okay, so for today we're done. No? Uh, pag screenshot mo, I'll, sta I'll start with the first board. Screenshot for your... For those who are... Uh, uh, in person, you can take your cell phone and take a picture of the notes. Okay, another class. Are we done? Class, let's proceed with the other board. Yes, sir.
Are you done? So, if we are done... Excuse me, sir. Oh, wala pa? Pwede pa usap sa first na board, sir. Okay. Hanap-hanap akong screenshot ganyan. Thank you. Okay na? Okay na, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, let's... I'm going to ask you again to turn on your cameras. Please turn on your cameras. Oh, make sure you do not you do not uh, touch the cameras, no? Okay. Oh, no, yeah, they are fixed. Huh? Ang isa ka tuyok is 2 pa eh. So, 360 na siya. O, ito nga, ra? 180. Niya pa eh, ra? Okay, 180 man siya. Ang isa ka tuyok is 360. 2 pa eh na siya. Okay, I'm going to ask again the volunteers to erase the board. Anong uban? Pagkaho Manila, kaya itong paputi o itong panon pa. Pagkaho na ito ng puti-puti. Okay, let the class. Thank you, sir. Okay, so thank you for this afternoon. Successful.